is a Storm Track 5 weather alert day. Meteorologist Jessica Burns is tracking possible storms and gusty winds, the potential impacts, and when it could reach your neighborhood. Also this morning, two locals are drafted into the NFL. The exciting moment they heard the news. In the unique way Milligan University students are remembering a dear friend they lost as they celebrate the biggest day of their college careers. From WCYB, this is News 5 This Weekend. And good morning. I'm Caleb Perney here with meteorologist Jessica Burns, who is tracking this line of storms. And what are you expecting for our region? Well, the storms aren't here quite yet, but they will be getting here as we go, mainly into this afternoon. If we take our graphics fully, you can see the line of showers and storms that we are watching has currently gone through London, Kentucky, and is now moving into portions of Leslie County very slowly. Here's a little bit of a wider look at that line of showers and storms that will be edging into our region, mainly as we go again into this afternoon. We're going to be watching as these showers and storms move through. Could see some gusty winds with them as they pass on by. We'll get more of those impacts coming up in just a couple more minutes. But first, let's talk about what's going on right now because things aren't very uh, active right now. We are seeing a little bit of a breeze. You can see that flag waving over uh, the uh, airport over the campus of Northeast State on our Ashley weather camera. Temperatures are off to a great start. 66 degrees already very warm this morning. Here's the temperatures all across the region. Upper 50s for some areas. Some places already in the mid 60s and we will eventually warm up a little bit more as we go into the rest of the day today. We're expecting highs to be in the mid to upper 70s. But remember those showers and storms will be rolling through this afternoon and into the early evening. We'll time them out a little bit more and also discuss what all you can expect as they roll through our region in just a few minutes. Thank you, Jessica. And this morning, fire crews continue to battle a blaze on Rome Mountain that has consumed 157 acres. It started Thursday afternoon. In our latest update, state forestry officials say the fire is now 55% contained. That's up from 40% yesterday. The fire is close to Highway 19E. You can see on this map, the fire is just to the west of the town of Rome Mountain. It's on the left side of the highway coming in from Elizabethton. And Milligan University students honoring a beloved friend in a unique way yesterday. Students wore these wristbands during their commencement ceremonies. They're in honor of Eli Kramer, the sophomore track athlete who was killed after being struck by a car last month. The band say YMFR, meaning your mother's favorite runner. It was a joke t-shirt that Kramer often wore. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His love and yours forever. And 223 graduates received their diplomas at Milligan yesterday. Families gathered for the ceremony in Seeker Chapel, the traditional location. Commencement was held on the baseball field last spring due to COVID precautions. Those attending spoke about the impact of their college education and how it affect life after graduation. I'm very grateful to the incredible community, to the professors, mentors, friends who have acted as models for me in this area. They have shown me that one's attitude, how one reacts to situations, and setting one's mind on Christ instead of worldly things are ways that we can honor God in everyday life. Bachelor's, master's, and doctoral degrees were all awarded at the two ceremonies. Tennessee voters will pick nominees for a variety of local offices on Tuesday. Primary elections are scheduled for county offices. Top races include county mayors, sheriffs, commissioners, judge positions as well. Early voting wrapped up on Thursday. The polls will be open this Tuesday from 8 until 8. Two people are recovering after they were shot in downtown Johnson City, and now police are asking for your help as they hunt for the gunman. Officers were called to Spring Street around 1 o'clock Saturday morning. Investigators say two bystanders were shot and are expected to be okay. Witnesses described the shooter to be a black male between 6 foot 1 and 6 foot 3 wearing black clothing. If you have any information, you're asked to call police. 
Two Southwest Virginia natives had their dreams come true. Honeaker's Jordan Stout and Big Stone Gap's James Mitchell were drafted into the NFL. We have team sports coverage this morning with reaction from both. News 5's Jarvis Heron joins us first with the details on Stout. It's been 15 years since a Southwest Virginia native has been drafted by an NFL team. That drought, now a thing of the past. With the 130th pick in the 2022 NFL Draft, the Baltimore Ravens select Jordan Stout, Hunter, Penn State. The Honeaker High grad is the highest drafted punter in 10 years. 2021 spectacular for Stout. He had the highest punting hang time in the country. He was the punter of the year in the Big Ten Conference and a finalist for the Ray Guy Award, which recognizes the best punter in the nation. Stout says he had a feeling the Ravens would be the team drafting him and was asked about what excites him about going to Baltimore. Uh, one big thing for me is... Uh... I know special teams are always very successful at the Ravens, and it's also one of the closest uh, clubs to my home. So that, that those are both those are two of the reasons. Stout joins a Ravens organization known for their special teams. Their kicker, Justin Tucker, is one of the best in the NFL. And then their head coach, John Harbaugh, he's one of the best special teams coaches in the league. He'll, com he'll be competing with longtime punter Sam Koch for the starting job. Now, Stout wasn't the only Southwest Virginian to have his name called on Saturday. Sports director Casey Getz spent the day in Big Stone Gap at James Mitchell's watch party. In Big Stone Gap, we were watching the NFL draft with Union grad James Mitchell inside his family's home. And then around 3.30, this happened. The Detroit Lions selected Mitchell late in the fifth round with the 177th overall pick. Hey, James, how's it feel to be going to the NFL? I don't even know what to say. You know, we're just all sitting here, uh, just waiting. But you know, I'm I'm blessed and I'm ready to go. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm speechless right now. I really don't know what to say. They had talked to my agent a little bit about possibly getting something done if I didn't get drafted. Um, you know, maybe picking me up after the draft as a free agent. So when they called, it was it was pretty much it was a surprise. As a parent, you want to see your children accomplish the things that they set their minds and their hearts to do. And when they get an opportunity to do that, to make that happen, uh, it's wonderful to be on the sideline watching it happen, but knowing, too, that you were part of that accomplishment. Jarvis has more NFL draft covers coming up later in sports. Thanks, guys. A big surprise at the gas pump for some drivers. Why the price for some was as much as a dollar lower. That's after the break. And later, our region's biggest fundraiser of the year for Alzheimer's support and research. Why it's about so much more than just the fundraising. It was a welcome surprise for drivers in Boone's Creek. They found out the price at the pump wasn't as painful as they expected. Boone Trail Baptist Church members spent two hours on Saturday at the Roadrunner off of Interstate 26 in Boone's Creek. The church lowered the price by as much as a dollar for drivers. Members not only pumped the gas for drivers, they also washed windows and handed out goodie bags. They pumped more than 2,500 gallons total. Hundreds of volunteers spent their Saturday cleaning up Boone Lake. More than 300 people met at six sites around the lake, picking trash, tires, and debris from the water and along the shoreline. Organizers tell us this year's cleanup more than tripled last year's effort. We're told 25 tons of trash and other debris was taken out of the lake. While today is very important, organizers say the work doesn't stop happens is we're fed by two beautiful rivers, the Watauga River and South Holston River, and it brings down just tons and tons of, of trash and logs and floating debris. So we do our best to keep this lake clear for navigation and swimming and just to make it safe and clean. Lake traffic is expected to be busier this year. Uh, this marks the first time in several years that Boone Lake has been at full pool for the summer. TVA is wrapping up the major Boone Dam repair project that forced the water to be lowered. One man's journey out of drug addiction. What made all the difference next in Road to Recovery? Showers and storms are headed our way. We'll time them out in a few minutes. Coming up this week on Fall Measure.
Americans are heading out for travel in a big way, more than any time since the start of the COVID pandemic. How long will it take for the travel industry to recover from its devastating losses? We explore the challenges ahead. We travel to California to follow up on our reporting on the nation's first ever solar mandate, where all new homes are required to have solar power. Is it working? A surprising analysis. And we go on a drive that's not for the nervous. It's the kind of ride that will likely be offered to you in the not too distant future. Heading to 2741 Folsom Street. That's this week on Full Measure. Addiction is everywhere, but so are the resources to recover. In this week's Road to Recovery, we're learning the story of a man who turned his life around. And he says it was made possible through an organization called the Men of Nehemiah. I can remember this moment where I, I'm... <laughs> where I wake up and I just see ambulances and, and medical personnel and my mom, and for a whole minute, I thought I was in heaven. Casey Waits, a recovering addict, says when addiction grabs you, it grabs you with both hands and doesn't let go. I was laying in a four-lane highway, and someone had stopped and pulled me out of the highway. That was Waits' no, darkest no, moment. Just... But it wasn't until he went to jail that he decided it was time to turn his life around. And my mom called me on the phone and told me about the men of Nehemiah. And that is when I said to myself, okay, there is someone out there who wants to help me. Luckily, I found freedom now. Where I don't care the Men of Nehemiah is a faith-based nonprofit organization recovery program. Lee Morris is the founder of the Men of Nehemiah Abilene and a recovering addict himself. He has a drive to help men recover just like he did. The passion. The passion is just one more man, just one more man that may find freedom in Christ from the hell of addiction. That's it. Right here, right here, right here. The organization offers a four-phase, 12-month program. Now uh, we take a guy that's like Casey or, or Eric and Andreas that have been at their most broken point, and if they're willing to change, then we make a, a process available to them. We have a military aspect of our program for discipline and uh, to instill obedience and also self-worth. The solution is in recovery. And Morris says that comes with people being willing to help. If you can find a solution to that problem, you would change this community, this city, this state, and this country. Helping one man recover at a time. Since I've been in this program, I've been here six weeks, and uh, my dad told me the other day that I was allowed back at his home. The men of Nehemiah is rebuilding lives and saving men just like weights. Reporting in Abilene, I'm Farrah Welton. I know showers and storms are going to be moving in mainly this afternoon. That's why we have a weather alert day declared for today because some of these showers and storms could be a little bit on the strong side. Here's satellite and radar. We can see a bit of cloud cover over our region. Everybody's dry for now, but we can see off to our west that line of showers and storms slowly inching toward our region. A little bit of a wider look. It's a cold front that's slowly coming across our region as we go into the later portions of the day today. Now, as we go into the morning, the front will eventually start to come into our region. Here's 10 a.m. You can see some rain moving into portions of Lee, Wise County, and slowly on inward as we go further into the afternoon. Once we can get into the late afternoon and into the early evening hours as the front slowly continues across our region, we could see a few isolated showers popping up that could be a little bit on the stronger side. Those showers and storms could pack a little bit more of a punch during the afternoon once we see the heat of the day fueling those storms. But then as we go into the overnight hours, the showers and storms will eventually die down. So our greatest risk for severe weather is this afternoon and this evening. Overnight, last night, the Storm Prediction Center placed our region under a level two risk for severe weather. Main concerns still are high winds and the possibility for some downpours. However, the hail threat has increased a little bit, but mainly 
mainly for portions of southwest Virginia, less so for northeast Tennessee. So be aware of those concerns as we go into this afternoon. This system isn't going to produce a whole lot of rain. Most spots seeing around th uh, tenth to three tenths of an inch. Some locally higher amounts, though, around three quarters of an inch are possible, just depending on where the downpours happen to fall. Now, our threat tracker is up to a high for today, mainly for those concerns for the gusty winds and the hail threat in southwest Virginia. Once we can get past today, tomorrow is going to be a nice little bit of a breather. We'll see the sunshine return and much more pleasant conditions, but then the rain returns again as we go into Tuesday and the rest of the week ahead of us. So as we go into the day today, we are going to be seeing temperatures pretty warm, mid to upper 70s, seeing those showers and storms in the afternoon and into the evening as well. The overnight hours, we will start to calm down a little bit. Skies becoming partly to mostly cloudy overnight and dropping down into the mid to upper 50s across the region. Tomorrow will be a little bit warmer than today. Highs will be in the upper 70s to low 80s all across the entire region, seeing that sunshine. So it will eventually be a little bit more of a pleasant day tomorrow. But tomorrow is our only break that we're going to be seeing. Once we get into Tuesday and on outward, we're going to be seeing a very wet stretch of weather for the week ahead. We're going to be watching as a series of weather makers come through our region. Tuesday, you can see widespread showers possible into portions of Wednesday. As we go into early Thursday morning, we'll catch a slight break. Some spots possibly seeing a few showers here or there, but as we go Thursday afternoon and into Friday, again, the rain chances elevate once more. So definitely your umbrella is going to get a workout this week. We do have that weather alert day declared for today. Only mainly in the afternoon and evening as that front comes through. We see the heating of the day fueling some of the showers and storms that pop up. Gusty winds, of course, one of our main concerns for that. The sun returns tomorrow and then the rain returns Tuesday on outward, cooling down into the mid to low 70s as we go into next weekend. The tributes pouring in for a country music legend. What Naomi Judd said about mental health on the Today Show, next. Storm Track 5 weather cameras brought to you by your locally owned Ashley. The tributes are pouring in for country music star Naomi Judd. She died at age 76. Kathy Park reports on Judd's life and legacy. Country music has lost a legend. Ashley and Winona Judd have lost their mother. Ashley posting on Instagram, we lost our beautiful mother to the disease of mental illness. We are shattered. We are navigating profound grief and know that as we loved her, she was loved by her public. We are in unknown territory. Naomi Judd, gone at 76 years old, was half of the Grammy-winning duo The Judds with her daughter Winona. The group is set to be inducted into the Country Music Hall of Fame tomorrow. Over a 30-year career, The Judds ran up 14 number one songs. Hits like Mama, He's Crazy. Mama, He's Crazy. To Girls' Night Out. But it was not a life without struggles. Naomi Judd was an early advocate for destigmatizing the issue of depression. I want to let the world know that it's not a character flaw, it's a disease. Just she like opened up about her challenges with mental health on NBC's Today Show. You talk in the book about thinking about wanting to commit suicide. Yeah. That's how bad it can get. You get down in this, it's so hard to describe because you get down to this deep, dark hole of depression. Tonight, tributes pouring in from Music City and around the world. Travis Tritt writing, Naomi Judd was one of the sweetest people I've ever known. Carrie Underwood adding, sing with the angels, Naomi. Marin Moore is posting, honored to have witnessed love can build a bridge just a few short weeks ago. Love. That performance at the Country Music Television Awards show, one of Naomi Judd's final shining moments. Kathy Park, NBC News. A big accomplishment for a local third grader, how she's using her experience to help other kids. That's coming up. Retirement. 
Now, this is a pretty cool story. A local eight-year-old girl, now a published author. Her name is Amia River Tapper, a third grader at Hawkins Elementary. She recently published her very own book. It's titled, When Auntie Died. It shares the importance of talking about emotionally difficult experiences. Following her aunt's death, Amia asked her mother why she could talk about her auntie without crying. Her mom, a mental health therapist, helped her to understand the process of grief and inspired her to publish her story. Amia wanted to make death understandable and help other kids through the grieving process. I'm very happy because if other kids get this, they can, they can read this and then if their parents know what to do, they can help them get through a loss that they had. Wow, wise beyond her years. An event to showcase Amia's work is set for May the 14th in Rogersville. An Alzheimer's walk that's raising money for research and to support families. Why is it about so much more in the firsthand story of caregiving that may surprise you? And a tornado destroys homes in Kansas, the people who lost their lives. That's in our next half hour on News 5 This Weekend. CYB. This is News 5 This Weekend. Good morning and thanks for waking up with us on News 5 This Weekend. I'm meteorologist Jessica Burns. We're tracking a cold front that's slowly starting to try and inch into our region. Right now a little bit of rain going on in the northern portions of Leslie County in Kentucky. You can see all that rain is slowly headed our way. Here's that cold front that's going to be slowly inching across our region as we go into this afternoon. That's when we're expecting some of that rain to be reaching us mainly this afternoon and as we go into the evening we're expecting some widespread showers, maybe some gusty winds with it as well. We'll have more details on the impacts that we could be seeing with that front as it comes through in just a few minutes. Right now we're seeing some clouds coming in across Kingsport on our Ashley weather camera. Temperatures though off to a great start. We're feeling very warm, 66 degrees right now in the Tri-Cities. Temperatures all across the board, pretty warm, upper 50s in some areas, some places already in the upper 60s like Gate City at 68, 65 in Rogersville, 66 right now again in Kingsport. As we go into the rest of the day today, we will eventually warm up into the mid to upper 70s as we watch that rain come in as we go into the afternoon and evening. We'll time out the showers and storms in just a few minutes. Families impacted by Alzheimer's disease and their supporters gathered in Johnson City Saturday for the walk to make Alzheimer's a memory. The event raises money for the cause, but event organizers say it's about so much more. Hundreds in Johnson City's Willow Springs Park for the biggest fundraiser of the year for Alzheimer's Tennessee. The money helps fund research for treatments and a cure and so much more. 86% of our dollars go back directly to programs and services like respite visits, like bath visits, like community partner education, uh, you name it. And in a nutshell, we can do it. But the most important part is building community for families who go through so much. I've had family experience with Alzheimer's disease and other forms of dementia and I know what it's like to feel that you're kind of out there all alone. The thing that has happened to you this week that you think there's no one else in the world that's been through that to find a connection with a community of loving, caring, encouraging people. Vendors providing services for Alzheimer's patients were on hand plus fun for kids and pets. Marquita Puckett is caregiver for both her husband and her dad. She says it's an experience only other caregivers can truly understand. When you hear that diagnosis in the doctor's office you think okay I can do this I'm gonna read I'm gonna get my team together and we're gonna we're gonna go through this and then you don't know how long it's gonna last she says the thing that often goes unnoticed is the financial impact people are not aware insurance doesn't cover anything with this disease so when you have your loved one at home and you have to get help in the home you have to pay for a lot of health care needs where's the money coming from it doesn't solve the money problem right away, but events like these are building support networks and raising awareness. People across the region cleaned out their medicine cabinets to keep drugs off the streets. 
Several places across our region taking part in National Prescription Drug Take Back this weekend. This was the scene at the Sullivan County Sheriff's Office. Students from ETSU's Gatton College of Pharmacy helped with the program. A lot of them do say that these medications, and we have got a large amount of controlled substances, are just stuff that they're trying to get off the streets, just trying to keep out of their houses. I had one woman who said that uh, she was just getting rid of them specifically to get them out of the room where her daughter is at. You know, be able to give this opportunity to people uh, who might be taking some older medications or expired medications. Um, it's good to get that out of their hands when they don't know what else to do with it. The Sullivan County site collected more than 100 pounds of non-controlled medications and 3 pounds of controlled substances. Some of the medications collected at the event dated back decades. The Rotary Club of Abingdon making fundraising fun. The 73rd annual Rotary Frolics is raising funds for the Rotary Splash Pad. The Frolics are a variety of skits and music performed by community members. The club presented Mayor Derek Webb with a $100,000 check to match the town's contribution to the construction of the splash pad. It will be added to the new Meadows Sports Complex. It's a long community tradition and uh, lots of folks come out to see it and we appreciate everybody supporting the event because we just raise a lot of money and turn around and give it away to the community. The Frolics has always been a big deal for as long as I can remember, something I always wanted to be a part of. There's a lot of the movers and shakers in our community and, uh, you know, I'm just happy to be a part of it. The event also recognized two club members participating in their 50th Rotary Frolics event. Why Ukrainians will not surrender in one town just about destroyed by Russian forces. And the new details of the status of people trapped inside a steel plant coming up. A Russian news agency now reports a group of civilians has left a steel plant in Ukraine where hundreds were sheltering in one of the last holdouts in Mariupol. Cole Higgins has the latest. In the southern city of Mariupol, a Ukrainian resistance ruling out surrender. If there is no choice but captivity, we will not surrender. The city under intense Russian shelling since the start of the war more than two months ago. Some 100,000 people believed to be trapped there, including hundreds of soldiers and civilians holed up in a steel plant. They're telling us it's, it's, it's a humanitarian disaster there. The, the city is being, uh, being destroyed. Basically, a beautiful, striving city was turned uh, into a concentration camp by, by the Russians. Russian State News reporting Saturday that 25 civilians, including children, were allowed to leave the plant. CNN has not independently verified those claims. This, as exclusive new satellite images show what remains of the plant. Ukrainian forces also hunkering down in the east amid relentless Russian attacks. In Donbass, the occupiers are doing everything to destroy any life in this area. Constant brutal bombings, constant Russian strikes at infrastructure and residential areas show that Russia wants to make this area uninhabited. To the south in Odessa, reports of multiple explosions. The military's operational command declaring the airport's runway damaged, potentially continuing a trend of Russia targeting supply lines and transit infrastructure this week. But the Ukrainians are fighting back. New footage shows Ukrainian forces striking Russian armor in the east Saturday. I'm Cole Higgins reporting. Dozens of homes now destroyed by a tornado in Kansas. The lives it took next. And showers and storms are working into our region. We'll be timing them out in a few minutes. A tornado in Kansas has destroyed dozens of homes and left more than 10,000 people without power. The storm started out as a small rope tornado when it touched down in southeast Wichita and Andover. Then it grew into a large cone as it gained momentum. Three University of Oklahoma meteorology students were killed in a car crash while storm chasing. Several others were injured in the storm, which knocked homes completely off their foundations. More than 1,000 firefighters are battling the country's largest active wildfire as it edges closer to a small town in northern New Mexico. The fire has already burned more than 166 homes as it has now grown to more than 150 square miles. 
The blaze is spreading in the direction of the town of Las Vegas, New Mexico, which has a population of 13,000 people. The weather offered a reprieve to crews on Saturday, but the National Weather Service is forecasting extreme fire danger for parts of New Mexico, Arizona, Nevada, and Colorado today. The FBI conducted 3.4 million searches on American electronic data last year without a warrant. That's according to an annual report from the Office of the Director of National Intelligence. The data used was previously collected from the NSA. The practice is legal, but has come under fire by privacy advocates. Officials say the actual number of searches is probably a lot lower because of the complexities in sorting foreign data. Nearly 2 million searches were related to alleged threats by Russian hackers to break into critical infrastructure. <music> showers and storms will be moving in later this afternoon and into the evening that could be a little bit on the stronger side that's why we have a weather alert day declared for today we're watching as a cold front slowly starts to inch a little closer to our region you can see that uh, coming into portions of Leslie County in Kentucky a little bit of a wider look you can see that cold front extending down into the portion of Knoxville area and as we go into the rest of the morning this morning we're gonna be watching as the front slowly comes across our region by 9 or 10 o'clock this morning we'll start to see a little bit more rain often to portions of our western counties like Lee County Wise County so with the front slowly continuing to inch across our region as we go into the afternoon and early evening hours now once we can get into that late afternoon into the evening and we see the heat of the day see the sunshine a few showers could pop up and be a little bit on the stronger side could see some gusty winds as the front blows through tonight. The Storm Prediction Center placed our region last night under a level two risk for severe weather, mainly across portions of southwest Virginia, where they increased the possibility for some hail to be seen. However, most places across our region will just be dealing with downpours and gusty winds. Those are our still two main concerns with large hail. Uh, ranking right below that, mainly for Southwest Virginia. Again, less of a concern for portions of Northeast Tennessee this afternoon and evening once we can get into the heat of the day. This system isn't going to provide a lot of rain. Most places seeing around a 10 to 3 tenths of an inch of rain. Some locally higher amounts, though, around 3 quarters of an inch possible, just depending on where the, where the downpours happen to fall. Our threat tracker, though, is going to be at a high for today for the possibility for some gusty winds and the downpours with the weather alert Day declared, but as we go into tomorrow, much more pleasant conditions will await us. We'll see the sunshine return before we see more rain await us as we go into the later portions of the week. Today, though, we are going to see very warm temperatures, highs going up into the mid to upper 70s as that rain, maybe a few rumbles of thunder push in this afternoon. When we can get into the evening and overnight hours, things will start to quiet down. Skies becoming partly to mostly cloudy and temperatures dropping down into the mid to possibly upper 50s in some spots. So overall, a very mild night is in store tonight. Once we can get into tomorrow, things will look a little bit better. Highs of close to 80 degrees, but then the rain returns Tuesday and Wednesday. Possibility for some rumbles of thunder, but also staying very warm both of those days. Tomorrow is really our only dry day for the next couple of days. Once we hit Tuesday and onward, we're going to be hitting a very wet stretch of weather over the next coming days. We're going to be watching as a series of weather makers come through Tuesday and also into Wednesday with widespread showers likely both of those days. A little bit of a break early Thursday morning before more rain arrives Thursday and also into Friday. So your umbrella is definitely going to get a workout this week. We do have that weather alert day declared for this afternoon and evening as that cold front comes across our region and we see the heat of the day spark some of those showers and storms that could produce some gusty winds, maybe some hail in portions of southwest Virginia. Then as we go into to tomorrow. Things looking a little bit better. The sunshine returns, getting very warm into the 80s by Tuesday. Then we slowly start to cool down as more rain returns Tuesday through Saturday. And by the time we hit next weekend, highs will be in the low to mid 70s. Storm Track 5 weather cameras brought to you by your locally owned Ashley. BC.
The third and final day of the NFL Draft might be the most critical for organizations. You're looking to fill out your roster with hopes of finding those diamonds in the rough that could turn out to be critical pieces moving forward. The Tennessee Vols were well represented on Saturday. Defensive tackle Matt Butler taken by the Las Vegas Raiders in the fifth round. Offensive lineman Cade Mays goes in the sixth round to the Carolina Panthers. And then Theo Jackson, he just has to go on I-40 West for the next stop in his football career. The Tennessee Titans take him in the sixth round. Virginia Tech also had some selections. Of course, they had James Mitchell, but they also had defensive lineman Amari Barno, who went in the sixth round also to the Carolina Panthers. Offensive lineman Luke Tenuta goes to the Buffalo Bills. And then Lasitas Smith, the offensive lineman, goes in the sixth round to the Carolina Panthers. An important stretch for the ETSU baseball team. The Bucks are taking on Mercer, and they're trying to catch the Bears, who are in second place in the SoCon standings. Saturday, pivotal for the Bucks. The two teams playing a doubleheader, trying to beat the weather incoming later today. The Bucks strike first in game one in the bottom of the first. Ashton King singles to right, a run scores. ETSU snatches the early 1-0 lead. And then in the top of the third, Mercer threatening. Hunter Lloyd on the mound. With a couple runners on, he gets Bill Knight to ground out. Justin Hanvey heads up play, guns it to the plate, gets the runner in time. Now, ETSU, they actually trailed 4-1 in the seventh inning. They score five runs in the seventh and eighth inning combines. They take game one of the doubleheader 6-4. They would lose game two, though, 6-2-3. World of Outlaws concluding at BMS. Kyle Larson racing in a sprint car, late model, and cup series car all in one weekend for the first time ever. We'll start with the late model heat race. Larson in the 57 trying to keep pace, but the number five driven by Spencer Baston from Lebanon, Indiana. Too much. He'd win the heat race and hold off Larson to win the sprint car feature race for his first win of 2022. And then in the late model, here's Larson in the number six. But the night belonged to Ricky Weiss in the number seven. He wins the heat race, and he would win the late model feature. That's a look at sports. Have a great Sunday. is when we're going to be expecting most of the showers and storms to be arriving. Now, they're going to be scattered, so you might be seeing periods on and off of showers. Some might be a little bit stronger than others. You might see some gusty winds. If you live in southwest Virginia, you might see a little bit of hail in some of the stronger ones, so be aware of that. It's always a great idea to have the StormTrack 5 weather app downloaded onto your phone. It's free on both the App Store and on Google Play. Just scan that QR code that's on your screen, and it'll take you right there to it, and all you got to do is press download. Now, once we can get past today, things will be a little bit better tomorrow. We'll see the sunshine return. Temperatures getting even warmer into the 80s will go Monday and Tuesday, but Tuesday on outward, it's just going to be kind of messy. We're going to be seeing scattered showers and storms periodically from Tuesday all the way out through Saturday, and temperatures will fluctuate a little bit, and by the time we hit next weekend, we're going to be a little bit cooler, but not really cold. All right, sound, sounds pretty good. I take it probably not walking to church this morning. Take I would car. just take a car <laughs> just in case you get caught into, into a scattered shower. All right, thanks, Jessica, and thank you for watching. Hope you have a great rest of your Sunday.